One day Catalpa bought a new boat. It all started in the engine room. <laughs> a funny noise coming from the engine bay and then we could smell burning. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hey guys, so it's day three. Um, we're just still cleaning. I hear a funny noise coming from the engine bay and then we could smell burning. He's just gone in there and touch the starter motor and burn his fingers. Starter motor is really hot, huh? Not the starter, but the solenoid. I thought it sounded like I was standing in the kitchen. I heard like the engine turn by itself. Um, oh, she was hot. I actually put this, I turned the key, ignition key this morning and um, just to see if there was any charge in it. But I did leave the ignition on. Oh. So I've just turned everything off for now. But that's not cool. Well, it's got him a cold beer, but now he wants to drink it. It's not going to help your fingers if you drink it. 12 o'clock and she's giving me a nice cold Guinness, guys. Come on. It's just strange. I don't know why, why the solenoid would get so hot. I had no idea. I did hear it turn and then the solenoid. So I just cleaned out the fridge. All right. That was a bit yucky. Need my little multimeter now. Where's that at, darling? Oh, my he's going to do work with a beer in your hand, hey? My hand, what an excuse. Hey, I, Sarah oh, turns around ridiculous. and I'm like this, I say, i got sore fingers. <laughs> oh. Do you want me to be your uh, left hand? I wasn't, ex I, was, I was feeling it as to see if it was warm, thinking, is that where it's come from? I didn't realise it would be red hot. Yeah, I don't think you should have touched it. So, I did turn it on this morning, guys. I haven't even told Sarah this, but... I turned it on, I wanted to see if there was a like a kick in it, because I've checked the oil, I've checked the water, I've checked the plumbing, I've checked the valves are open, I haven't turned it on, it's like day, what day, day is this on the boat? Three. Day three on the boat, we're just trying to tidy up, I uh, haven't gone to the mechanical side of things, because there's a lot to look at. He walked in there, came back out, shut the door and went, alright, that's, that's later. <laughs> Do that later. It's never a good thing to smell burning electric. No, it's not like burning, it's like a heat smell. There is lights in here, I haven't figured it all out. There is just stuff going on everywhere here. And there is a maze to Oh my get god, look at that, put the light on there. Oh my god. Oh look, we're in here now guys, it might as well, can we see or not? A little bit. Can you see? Tell us a story. Well, one day Catalpa bought a new boat. It all started in the engine room. <laughs> Righto. There's inverters, there's chargers. I don't even know what that is. Uh, there's water makers. There's, wow, uh, that must be water filters for the, uh, for the water tank, I think. Ah, uh, look, there's, I think all that's 240 behind me, so I won't get near that, and it shouldn't be open, but it is. I suppose it's an engine room. Um, Look at this. There's a 12 volt panel, the back of it. There's that, an oil a... pump, actually. That's an oil pump. So when I do an oil change, it actually uh, mechanically pumps it out. It's right there. And there's... so in comparison to Catalba, how, how good's the access? Oh, it's awesome. I've got to clean it all up. There's three air conditioning units. I think they're all working. I haven't even started them yet. Yeah, you did turn it on, remember? And, um, let's have a look here. I just, I can't let go of this beer. <laughs> I've just burnt my hands. I, I could smell something and I come in and I straight away because I tried to start the motor earlier and uh, I don't think we've got enough charge there but regardless of that I felt the um, solenoid on the starter motor and it was red hot so I don't know what if it's a short somewhere or there's wires everywhere I have no idea of the history we'll go into that later but the guy to talk to is no longer around um, so it's a little bit of figuring everything out on our own, which is not ideal when you're buying a boat. It's always a bonus if you have the owner of the vessel run through all the systems with you. So there's a light there. There's actually a few lights. Okay, there's no, there's no current going on in there in the moment. So I'm just going to have to actually run through everything and check it all out before I start. Like I say, I've checked the oil, checked the water, checked the sea cocks are open. I've checked everything before we do a pre-start on it. It looks pretty good, the motor. And, um, I don't like that, I don't know why that. If it just hasn't been started for a while and it's a little bit sticky because it's been sitting for so long, um, that's what I'm thinking. I did hear it wind, so it's working. Is um, it stuff now though? 
No, I don't know. Maybe. Could be stuff now. I'm in the galley tonight. Got chicken and salad and eggs. And um, we're eating upstairs for the first time in our cockpit. I just want to service the engine and see where everything's at. I've got a new starter motor. I'm wondering why the solenoid was burnt out. I'm wondering what the issue is before I put a new component on. Um, there is wires that are unlabeled, cut, cut. There's wires running over hot parts. There's wires joined, there's wires snipped. I don't, I don't know what's live, what's not. Um, the whole lot's very stiff. There's actually parts have been melted. There's exposed wire. I don't know, like the, it's just a mess at the moment. I don't know if this was lent up against something hot and all these wires have exposed themselves or whether something shorted and isn't fused. It's an absolute dog's breakfast is what we'd say in Australia. I'm not too keen on doing anything to this wiring harness. I've got a few options in my head, which is rewire the whole harness. Um, it's a pretty important part, this. You want your engine to start when you turn the key. You want it to stop and you don't want any fires. You want this wiring loom and everything that attaches to it from all the sensors and starters and what have you to be right. Well, to me, I want to turn the key and I want it to start. So in this case, I don't trust any of this. So like I said, I'm gonna to have to either redo the whole lot, the whole wiring loom and work with the componentry I've got, or I'm actually thinking, um, I don't know what sensors match up with what. Um, so I'm actually thinking of just ordering a new wiring harness and starting from scratch. The motor itself looks fine, um, it sounded fine, it started fine. I crossed the, the two bars on the starter motor to start it. This doesn't blow smoke. I think for now I'm just going to pretty much get rid of all the old wiring harness and um, order a new one and just start fresh because I'm, I'm not happy with it and I don't know if you can see it like there's bits that are soldered, bits that are melted, bits that are cut, wires are hard, wires are joined. I don't like joins in sort of, like there's a join in Nelly, there's two joins there. Cut wires, there's nothing's really labelled. It's like I said, it's a bloody dog's breakfast. I'm going to rip all this out and start fresh. It's, a, it's an expense we didn't want, but it's something I want to be done properly and I want it to turn, when I turn the key, I want it to start. Pretty much from what I've seen so far, apart from the wiring loom, uh, one of the heat exchangers needs to be tidied up. I can see that and um, that's the start of it guys. So I'll get this thing serviced, check out where all my um, inodes are. But yeah, I'm not gonna play with that. I'm not a fan of hot melted wires with a hundred joins in there. Hopefully. Looks like the right one. We'll soon see. There's some weight in that. Oh my god, how heavy is that? Doesn't have a weight on there, but that's some solid bit of gear. So this one come from Amazon. It is an aftermarket starter motor for a Perkins. It's like $160. I think a genuine Perkins one is near 400 We have used on our old boat a non-genuine and they seem to go all right and I checked the current that goes through to activate the solenoid and it was constantly on so I think one of the switches the start buttons or something stuck on so before we can wire this unit up I'm gonna have to run over the electrical system and see what the fault was with the first one and the actual starter motor I did bypass all this and I just started it by crossing the terminals to see if the motor would start and it started but the old starter motor was a little bit um, sticky would you say uh, didn't really work too well so thought we'd get a new one and the old one I'll get a replacement solenoid for it and I'll recondition it and it'll just be a spare in the boat so we'll have a spare and a new one and um, yeah that's that first things first we're getting this engine going and we need a starter motor. The old starter motor is toast. Well, it's very, it's so rusty and the throw on it, it was, it just wasn't working correct. 
the uh, solenoid on it's been burnt out from that section of wires which I showed you. Someone has, um, I don't even know what you call it, it's a schmozzle. Uh, we have the new one, we have one problem. The old one had a spacer plate, which is a uh, Delco one, I think. The replacement one I've got here, which I've used on Catalpa, problem being is that because of the spacer plate they didn't need a long thread but I need about another 15 mil on top of this so I need the thread to come down another 15 mil so we can tighten it up so I'm just going to run a, a um, die on that and then we should have a starter motor in there there's something little that gets you but that's all good Paul on another boat here has lent me his tap and die set so I'll run a thread on that give me his die set back and uh, install this starter motor see if she starts so one of the handy things on a boat which i've found over the years and i don't have one at the moment but i will do as soon as i get a chance to get one is a vice i haven't got one yet so taz is going to hold this for me die on here which is a 38 die and we're going to run another 15 mil down on the thread i haven't got any cutting fluid but i'm just going to use a bit of uh, outboard oil a bit of lubrication and um, I'll get Taj instead of a vice to hold this and if he holds that like that I'll be able to put a thread on it here are the two threads I've got one more to go you can see there two new threads one remaining and uh, all I've been doing is just putting a, a double lock nut on the bottom and that allows it not to spin while Taj holds it in the uh, socket and uh, it's a little bit backyard style or bush style or whatever you want to call it, but it'll do for now. So I haven't got transport today, so I'm just making do with what we have. And I'll just get Taj to um, hold that and I can turn the last thread out. So what I was having was about 15 mil of thread missing, so it wasn't allowing me to tighten up. Um, so that's why I'll just turn that around as an example. This will bolt into the motor now and uh, that should give me enough thread to tighten up. And I may leave these longer. I could have cut them down. They don't actually need to be this long for this one. But I may refurbish this starter motor at a later date and I've got a spare and at least that way the longer bolts will fit with that starter motor. Right, Taj. Okay guys, sorry about the hairy belly but um, here we are. This is the new starter motor going in. Pretty easy, wasn't it? It was in. Took him five seconds. So last night, I got about this far on my oil change. Uh, the pump that pumps out the oil and puts the oil back in has just sort of burnt out. It looks old. That's an oil transfer pump. And Sarah's going to go in and see if she can find one at West Marine. And thanks to Paul, he's actually donated us a bit of his store credit. Not a bad one. It does look old. I think it's, uh, what's that brand? Groco, whatever the skin fittings are. Same brand's got the pump. Hopefully not too dear and the store credit covers it. But uh, that's the plan for today. And I'm going to get back in the engine room. Sarah's going for a ride on the push bike to go and get the new transfer pump for the uh, engine so we can do an oil change. In the meantime, while they're gone, I think the kids are gonna skate, Sarah's gonna ride. I'm gonna remove this, which is the old Vacuflus waste tank. I was gonna try and play around with it and make it our actual waste tank. I think I'm just gonna get a Jabsco one. Uh, Jabsco? I think it's a Jabsco one, all in one with the sensors and I'll hook that up. Um, so I'm going to remove that. There's lots of wires here and there. I'm just going to slowly start chipping away at all the loose ends in here and there's plenty of them. Um, I may even get into our head in there and that's the old Vacky Flush toilet. I remove that and that's about it. I'm just going to start slowly just thinning out what's not in use, what's discontinued, what's not safe, what's uh, yeah we don't need and um, just start chipping away at it. Hopefully get this little area, our mechanical space, in tip-top shape. At the moment, there's pipes and plumbing and wires and all sorts of fun stuff going on. Uh, we are connected to shore power at the moment, so I've got to be very careful with what I touch and what is live and what is loose and live. So there is a lot of wires in here that are actually loose, and we just want to make sure they're not... Well, back home we have 240 volts. Uh, over here in the US, it's 110. Uh, it's not as bad as getting a zap over here as Australia, but nevertheless, 
Oh, I don't like getting zaps at all. We'll just take our time, be careful, and try and work out what we have. Hello. Um, they don't have any, but that, I got them to order one and they'll be in tomorrow. They didn't have what we waiting wanted, so we've ordered in and it'll be there tomorrow. Come back. Just making some pumpkin and chicken pasta. Go with our parmesan and herb bread. Here and look at the difference. He's cleared out so much stuff. Sorry, excuse the butt crack. I'll blur it out for you. <laughs> You're so wiry, aren't you? Not pipes. <laughs> There's so much space in here. He'll probably fill it up again, but he's organizing. Reorganizing. It looks like you got a work bench over there, even. What are you doing, B? Um, joining some, just putting some things back on the something, putting wires on this board, <laughs> connecting <laughs> wires. You know what you're doing? Yeah, you? I'm connecting wires. Gotta make the sure they're the right colours. Well, you're doing a great job there. Some wires. Uh, trying to figure out what's what. Lots of wires. Lots of dead wires, lots of live wires, lots of 110 wires, 110 volts that is, and uh, just sort of just having a look at what's not in use and what's not needed and then I'll go from there. First things first, process of elimination of what's not in use. Alright, pull bell up. So this is the old radar which is not in use, it's the Furuno. Um, if anything, we'll link up one to our Raymarine, but I'm just pulling cables through, just pretty much getting rid of all the stuff that's not in use. This is Bella's pulling through from the nav station, so as I pull wires through, I just attach little cords to them, so little pull cords, so that way, if I do want to rerun a wire, which is all tucked up under there, um, I'll have a pull cord to bring new wires through. So, and they're not, I can just tie them up and they're out of the road and until the job's done, um, I'll be able to pull wires through without the trouble of trying to poke them down without a cord. Got lots of this to do, but we'll get there. In out today shopping. What you come back with? Oh, look, I've got the Master Technician Toolkit from Harbour Freight. Got myself some spinners, sockets. The lady did say it came in a kit. Clearly case. didn't. A case. A case. She probably didn't understand you. Yeah, it's hard to understand us Aussies. <laughs> All right, so I've been limited on tools. I haven't been able to do really anything on the boat. We just got a package. We don't know where it's come from. But there is a note inside. Lee and Sarah, we hope this little gesture helps you out. We have followed your channel from the first video and look forward to seeing you guys back out traveling the world. We love to travel, but sailing is not in the cards for us. We do, however, get to enjoy that part of traveling with you all. Take care, Eric and Julie. Oh, Thank you. Thanks, guys. This is super sweet. All the things he doesn't have because he left all this stuff on Catalpa. Oh, Truly, guys, magic. we really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Julie and Eric sent all this stuff here. All these tools, obviously understands we have no tools at all and has sent me a variety of all different tools from scissors to picks to brass hammers to wire strippers to pop rivet guns and just all little handy tools which I don't have and I do now even drill bits and die bits and step drills and tape measures, soldering irons and solder. Yeah, everyone has been helping in uh, whatever way they can to get us back out on the water and we're just so grateful. We also created an Amazon wish list. So thank you for the people that have already purchased yes, stuff on the wish list. Yes, thank you very much. We are super grateful, so thank you. Thank you for letting us join your journey. Thank you so much. <laughs> so these are items off our wish list on Amazon. And uh, Thanks, Roger. Thank you, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Um, this is part of Greg's little kit that he's helped us out with. I'm so appreciative. These are all the awesome tools that we're going to need. If anyone needs a fan, this is the best fan. 
It's not ugly. It's not too big. It gives you a lot of air. It's not loud. It's just like amazing. And I don't think you could get any other fan living on a boat other than this. We're yeah, the only thing, by them, guys. the only thing that, um, <laughs> the only thing we don't like about those fans is they don't last. Yeah, to get about a year and a half out of them in we've got Indonesia. Two years out of the last one. Yeah. So all of this stuff that we're about to unbox is from Greg. Thank you so much. We really, really, really appreciate you. You are an absolute legend. Thank you. Thank you. For making you. this process a little bit easier on us. So thank you very much. Oh, yeah. The gods have spoken. So yeah, the <laughs> Remnant tools. Put it down. And Thank you, Ryan. A kettle. Thank you very, very much. Now I'm ready for the engine bay. We have some stainless Thanks, steel. Thanks, Roger. Yes, this is what we use all, all the, time the time when we do our grocery shopping. It's an insulated, black, rolly, waterproof bag-looking thing. And we used to have one that Kenneth gave us, and we used it all the time. But we had to leave it in Australia. And now we have a new one, so this will be getting used all the time. More containers. Oh, I needed more, because I have been organising. <laughs> so Thanks, like everybody. It.